want you to think for a moment. Difficult task. When I say the name, Wayne Gretzky, Rachel Notley, Osama Bin Laden, what goes through your head? If I give you the names Jim Baker, if I give you the names Fred, Frederick Doss, can you tell a little, bit, a little bit about this person? What do you picture? Fellow Toastmasters, guests, I want to tell you, I want to talk about something that is probably the most important thing that a parent can do, name their child. A very important task. But how do you do it? What's the process? Traditionally, there have been different ways. Parents often aren't even given the opportunity to name their child in some countries. Does that seem strange? Grandparents, fortune tellers, can name a child. Grandparents being a very common one. When you were named, do you know the process? How your name was selected? Other ways. A common family name. A trendy name. Or parents can name their child simply by choosing names out of the air. Names out of the air. There's names like Moonbeam. There's names like a very famous child, Northwest. Do you know this one? <laughs> yes? These names are kind of nonsensical. A name is a person's culture. A name is a person's brand. When I mentioned Wayne Gretzky, everybody knows Wayne Gretzky. Wayne, he's made a lot of money on his name. But could you imagine, this is a funny one, Kelvin Klein is a name that everybody knows, yes? Kelvin Klein, could you imagine Kelvin Klein's daughter wearing his underwear? Everything's branded, interesting concept. For me, my child, my son in particular, we chose a name, we had to go through a process because my wife is Korean, we met in Korea, and I'm a very strong proponent of one name for one child. Many of my friends had two names. They had a name for the Western family, they had a name for the Korean family. I don't like this because that gets confusing. The child ends up having almost two personalities. So how did we do this? In my family, choosing names from the ancestors is very common. But with my wife being Korean, this got a little tricky. We had to choose very carefully. And so we started looking at names that, number one, both families could pronounce. My wife's name is Hee Kyung. My family has a very difficult time with that name. I think it's simple, but my wife has nicknames in my family. HK, Elf, she has a few different names. All polite, but different names. And so we had to choose names, like we chose Ben, we chose Alex, we chose a couple other names that were fairly easy. But Ben, with Korean pronunciation, became Van. I don't want my son named Van, it's Ben. And so we chose, ultimately, we chose a name, Gene. And it's a very interesting story about this name because this name, it can be written very easily in Korean. This name actually had a very interesting Chinese character to it. And it was the Chinese character that we realized this is going to be the name for us. Because the Chinese character for Gene meaning truth, had my wife's family name as part of the character. 
And so this concept of using names from ancestors to get into the name of the child, this resonated with us. My wife's family name is in my son's name. But what about my family? My father's name was John. My name is John. My son's name? Not John. <laughs> we said Gene. But my father's name is John Malcolm. I'm John Donald. I'm not a direct junior. And so choosing a name that comes from the family, Gene Malcolm McDonald, resonated. My family thought this was a wonderful name. My wife's family was happy they could pronounce my son's name. But what is a name? Getting back to a name being a brand, a name being a culture. My son, I think, has a name that encompasses both. Then, for you, for those with children, how did you choose a name? For those who want children, how will you choose a name? It's a very stressful task. But remember, how important is it? How can you do this? The child has to live with their name for the rest of their life. 